Today we're going to be talking about vectors. Now in another video we learned about arrays. <clears throat> and the thing about arrays is that they're pretty cool. They are, arrays are known as a data structure and what they allow you to do is store multiple entities of the same type within them. For instance in this array I declared up here I can store 200 integers in this array and then reference it through array notation from 0 to um, 199 because arrays are zero based. That is something very important to remember as most things in computers are zero based. So that's pretty cool. So another thing so another thing we should think about is what if for instance we need more than 200 elements or we don't know how many elements we need to add to in our we're going to have an array or data structure let's say it could be a dependable amount depending on your age or just another factor just like computers are you know they make a lot of dynamic or changing a lot of contents so something we can use is called a vector and I'm going to include it up top right here. And what a vector allows you to do is it allows you, it allows the, um, it's kind of like a mutable array where the size and the size and where you can insert things um, change. And so the array changes as all. What do I mean is that a vector does not have a set size like an array. I can add as many elements to I want and its size will change as well. So let me show you guys what I mean more equally. Also, Unlike vectors, you can check for equality between them, and you can make insertions anywhere you want. So let me show you guys what I mean. So right now I included vector. You have to make sure to include the vector library. Now I'm going to say I'm going to declare a type vector, and then I'm going to do something you probably haven't seen before if you've done C++. And that is I'm going to do these arrow brackets right here. And what these arrow brackets are trying to do is there in between them I need to list a generic and a generic is a type and what I'm saying in between these arrow brackets is that hey I need to give a type for the vector to hold just like in an array I need to declare with a type at the beginning I have to give the vector and a type that it's gonna hold things so I want my vector to hold ints or I can make it hold doubles or I can make it hold strings or anything else that, or any other types that you have learned, or any other types. But right now, I'm going to make it simple and make it ints. And let's call this um, vectors are beast. Okay. So there you go, semicolon, and I've got my vector right here. And so right now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add to my vector. And the method to do that is, I'm sorry. The method to do that is called push back. And so push back adds an element to the end of the array. I mean, the end of the vector. In a, an array, you have array notation, which as I'll show you in a second, vectors do too. And I can add any number to my array. Let's just say, and I'm going to add 1 and then 23 afterwards after my favorite player Michael Jordan okay so right now I pushed back three elements in the array so what I want to do here is I want to prove to you guys that I've added these elements in the array so the first element I added was 1 2 3 so just like an array arrays work do work similar to vectors I'm going to be able to say I put 123 as my first element I pushed that back well there was nothing in the array so that became the first element in the array and the way I could print this out is if I do vectors and then if I gave it the same thing as an array notation you can do that that's pretty cool with vectors I can do the same thing where I gave it this and then do, 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 do. I and then I print out the first position, which should be 123, and as you see, if I scroll up my bar here, I get 123, which is pretty cool. So that's definitely why. Don't worry about this endl not liking me, and that's pretty cool. So let me just show you guys that indeed all the elements that I have printed out are here. <laughs> And I get 123, 1, and 23. So they're all in order. But what vectors allow you to do is something pretty cool. So for instance, in this instance, this is not, not better than array because I know how many elements are in this vector. But what if, for instance, I didn't know how many elements are in this vector? 
But what I could do is vectors are really cool because one nice method they have is they have a size method. And what do I mean by that is that I can use a size here. I can use the dot size method on the vector to find out what the size is at this time. Now make sure you're thinking about what should the size be. So I've added one element, so the, si so the size should be one. And you know what, for fun, I'm going to put a, I'm going to print out the size after I add two more elements. So the size should be one, then the size should be two, should be three. <laughs> and I get one and I get three. So that's really cool in helping me keep up with the size. So one thing I could do here is a quick application is if I want to do a quick for loop, you guys should be in tune with your for loops. I could do an integer, I could make an in i and say i is less than vectors dot size i plus plus. And then what I want to do is I want to see out vectors i and I'll put an end though. So what I do there is uh, hopefully I print everything out and as you can see in my printout here I have 1, 1, 2, and then 3. And the reason because I have that is because I accidentally deleted the pushbacks but as you can see I printed out the size twice and then I got 123 so let's just let me just copy and paste this a few times just to show you guys that this is pretty dynamic. So I changed the size from one to three this time. And, sorry, I get three and then I get one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and I'll change these for you guys just to make it crystal clear that I'm not printing out the element accidentally. And if I print this out, then I get three, one, two, three, 13, and 23, which are the elements in the order. And as you can see, no matter if I change the size of the array list, my for loop would always print out all those elements. Um, note, I can use the same array notation to, for instance, change an element. So let's say I do vectors are beast, and then I do one equals five, and then I print this baby out. What do I get? I get the size is three, one, twenty-three, and then the element I changed is th the second element, which is indexed by one. So the whatever element you're trying to index is referred to as that element minus one in array notation. Remember that. And so I've got I changed my element three minus one with the array notation, which is pretty cool. Now this is pretty awesome here, and I want I want to also also show you guys one last application about vectors, and that's if I have a vector. Let me make it the same vector of the same type vector int, and say um, copy, and make another make another array. Right, first of all, I could sign a vector to a vector, so vector. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I could assign a vector like this, and what that does is it copies the contents over, which is pretty cool. So if uh, vectors our beast had two and three in it copy would now have two and three in it but I don't I just wanted to point that out quickly but so another thing I can do is let me do a let me just add something here dot push back uh, 234 and then let's say I do the same thing for this one push back and then I do 234 one thing I can do that I would have to write a total for loop to do for me, but something that's really cool is that in C++, it's already done, it's done, it's overridden, it's written for me, is that I can compare vectors. So I can compare that they have the same elements at the same position. So I put 234 in the copy and I put 234 in vectors are beast. And so now I'm going to try just simply comparing them for equality. So I'm going to compare copy to vectors are beast. And then I'm going to see out. Um, let's just see out a string. <sighs> they all equal. Do do do. And del. It's going to give me some stupid error there for no reason. And do 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 do. And look, it printed. I ran the program. I should make that always clear. I ran the program and it printed out they are equal because they have the same elements at the same place. Now, let me just show you guys now that if I add one element. Uh, push back one, and then if I run this, 
I did not get anything in the printout, which is pretty sad. And then let me just do let me do that again. So let's say I do vectors rb dot push push back one. So I am gonna add one to the array, but they're gonna be in a different order. And we're gonna run this program and see what it prints out. So again, it printed out nothing, and that's because the one and the 234 are not in the same order. They have to be contained in the array and in the same order. So they have to be the same size and in the same order, which is probably something, which is probably how you want equality to be done in a vector, which is pretty nice. So that's about, so there are, there is one other thing I want to show you guys with an vector, and that is, let's say, so I showed you guys how to insert to the back end of a vector, but what if you wanted to insert into the middle of a vector? Well, I showed you like you could do array notation, but let's say, but the array notation changes an element that's already in the vector. So let's say I wanted to, for instance, change an element in the vector, or I wanted to just add an element in the middle. So let me do that. Let me, for instance, let me just copy this a few times. It doesn't matter. And then I'll format it. So I have, what do I have? One, two, three, four, I have six elements now. But let's say I want to do, I want to add an element into the third slot. So I want, I can do, now I want to do a insert. And the way I do that is I use my insert method. And the way my insert method works is it takes two parameters. It takes the element you want to add, which I'll make 56, and then it takes the it takes an iterator, which is something we have not learned yet. So right now, let me set this up. So right now, the iterator it's going to take is where the array begins, which is simply given to me by array vector the vector dot begin method. And as you can see, it says make iterator here. This all looks very complicated. So it's it's making an iterator. And what an iterator is, is allows me to basically go through all the elements. And that's what this iterator is going to go through. It's going to go through all the elements to find this position, if you can kind of think about it. So I said I was going to put this in the third position. So all you got to do is I'm at the beginning of it. I'm at the beginning of my vector with the dot begin method. So all I want to do is I want to add three. And hopefully, well, now I can just print this out and print out a two here and then we're going to see if I'm right or if I'm one off. <laughs> okay guys, so my mistake, but I was one off and that's because you don't think is that when I run this I get one just so you know, so I am one off and let me make this three and then try running it again. And I'll explain to you why I was thinking about this wrong in a second. So when I run this, I do get 56. So I did. I made the third element in the array notation and the beginning notation 56. Now what happened is, is begin. Begin returns the first element in the array. So begin is the zeroth position. So if I want, so I'm at kind of the first index or the zeroth position of my vector. So if I wanted, so really when I added three, I was changing the fourth position or third index of my vector. And so I need to think about that. So really I can think of as begin as being, you know, as being a one, if I want to change the position. And then, so if I want to do that, if I wanted to change the third position, the third element, I would do that plus two, and then that would allow me to change it again into 56, which is pretty cool. So that's a lot of things you can do. You can also do a, an erase method. I'll quickly show that. And I believe you have to give it a, a iterator, which allows you to erase the positions just like we sh I showed you guys that's how you insert and so that's how you erase so I need to give it an iterator and so what I can do is I can do vectors dot insert I mean sorry dot begin uh, it's been a long day it also is Thanksgiving break for me too um, okay so there you go so I have vectors dot begin and that will erase the first element, so that will erase a, the one inside my array. And so instead, I'm going to show you guys this by demonstrating that 
I have just erased this element by printing out the size. Um, well, you know what? Something I'll also do is I'll print out the first element too. Because I just I just eliminated the zero, the first element in the array, which should so I erased one I believe, and now I should print out 56 down here below. Uh, let me run this program. So the size before I erase something was one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I add something down here, making it seven. So I erase something, so my my size should go down to six, and my element should be 234 because once I would move one, all the elements shift down for me into their corresponding indexes. So if I run this, I get six and 234. So in this video, we went over comparisons, addings, deletions, how to insert into the middle, and how to iterate over and over, how to use an iterator to insert somewhere, the dot begin method. We learned about the dot size method and how you can also use array notations with vectors. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys have a great day.